Intel has just released their new CPUs and they're shaking things up with a fresh naming system, Intel Core Ultra, starting with the 200 series. Today we're diving into the Intel Core Ultra 9, specifically the 285K model. But what's really intriguing about this generation is how radically different it is. Intel has switched over to the TSMC for manufacturing and completely revamped its architecture, even dropping hyperthreading, which is a bit of a surprise. Yet, despite these changes, Intel is promising a similar performance to the previous generation, but with significantly less power consumption and lower heat output. It's a bold shift and one that could change the game. Last gen CPUs were notoriously tough to keep cool at full power. So it's got me thinking, has Intel actually made cooling easier this time around? What kind of cooler do you need to really push these chips? And what's the bare minimum to keep things under control? After putting them to the test, I can say that while Intel's top tier processors still run hot, they're not nearly as difficult to manage as before. Let's break down the results. Let's start by going over our setup. We're testing the Intel 285K, the flagship processor of this generation, featuring 8 performance cores and 16 efficiency cores. For motherboard, we're using Gigabyte Z890 Elite, paired with a 48GB of DDR5 memory, running at 8400 mega transfers. For cooling, we tested the range of options. At the cheaper end, we used the Pure Rock 2 FX air cooler from Be Quiet, as well as LE500, which is a 240ml liquid cooler from Deep Cool. On a higher end, we tested both Dark Rock Elite air cooler and the massive 360ml LS720 water cooler, also from Deep Cool. To push the limits, we cranked up the fans and pump speeds to 100% in every scenario, aiming to see the maximum cooling performance. Let's kick things off in a burn-in test using Prime95, where we push the CPU to its limits to see how each cooler performs. Right away, the temperature graph shows that the lower end air cooler and the 240ml water cooler both climbing above 100 degrees, while the higher end coolers hover around 80 degrees. So, at stock configuration, the high-end coolers manage to keep CPU running at full throttle without overheating. Just because the CPU runs hot doesn't necessarily mean it's thermal throttling. So we also looked at the frequency graph to check performance. This shows the average effective frequency across all cores, keeping in mind that the larger performance cores and smaller efficiency cores run at different speeds. The focus here is more on the relative difference between the coolers than the absolute performance. We'll dive into the results a bit later on. In the frequency graph, the higher end coolers are neck and neck, with the LS720 possibly performing slightly better, or at least more consistently. The smaller liquid cooler struggled, while the Pure Rock 2 air cooler landed somewhere in the middle. Notably, the difference between the best and the worst coolers was around 700 to 900 megahertz, which is a significant gap for all core workload, meaning we're definitely losing performance with the lower end options. Now looking at the power consumption during the same test, the chip paired with the 240ml AO dropped below 190 watts, while the other coolers allowed it to pull between 220 and 240 watts, which is significantly more. When examining V-Ray benchmark results, this short test primarily evaluates a cooler's ability to rapidly dissipate heat from the CPU heat spreader within a span of about one minute, rather than testing its sustained cooling performance with extended period of time. It focuses on how quickly each cooler can offload heat during intense bursts of computational workload. In this comparison, the Be Quiet Dark Rock Elite is just short of 3% behind the top performing Deep Cool LS720, while the Be Quiet Pure Rock 2 FX lags by about 8% and the Deep Cool LE by almost 10%. Next up, we tested Cinebench R23 for both multi core and single core performance. Both lower end coolers had issues completing single core tests requiring several repeats, while the higher end coolers had no problems. This could be due to the chip stability rather than the cooler performance, but the difference in cooling efficiency might also be a factor. In the multi-core, the LS720 leads, with the Dark Rock Elite trailing by about 3%. The LE500 and Pure Rock 2 FX are both around 5% behind. This suggests that while the lower end coolers are capable, they can't quite match the higher end models in handling sustained multi-core loads, which demand better heat management over time. For the single core, the LS720 is again at the top with the Dark Rock Elite less than 1% behind, showing these coolers are neck and neck when it comes to managing brief bursts of high performance. The Pure Rock 2 FX lags by 1% and the LE500 is 2% behind. 
The difference here is almost irrelevant as we're talking a few percent here or there. I don't think anyone would actually notice this in the real world example. Next up is 7-zip test, where we ran two separate tests, one with multi-core and one with single core performance. Let's start with the multi-core results. For compressing the Pure Rock 2 FX leads with the LS720 and Dark Rock Elite trailing by less than 2%, the LE500 is about 3% behind the leader. These results suggest that all coolers perform similarly when compressing data, with only minor differences between them. For decompressing, the Dark Rock Elite takes the top spot, with the LS720 just 1% behind. The Pure Rock 2 FX lags by 8% and the LE500 by 9%. Here, the high end coolers show clear advantages in handling the workload. Now, over to the 7 zip single thread test. For compressing, the LS720 leads followed by the Pure Rock 2 FX which is about 2% behind. The Dark Rock Elite and LE500 trail by 6% and 10% respectively. For decompressing, the LS720 is again at the top, but only by a small margin. The Pure Rock 2 FX is just 1% behind, with the LE500 also very close, trading by less than 1%. Interestingly, the Dark Rock Elite, which performed well in the other test, falls behind here, finishing last when trailing the leader by about 4%. The closely grouped results indicate that the cooler efficiency has less impact on the single thread task. All of the coolers performed similarly with the ranking shifting back and forth. We repeated the test multiple times and each time the results were slightly different. Which leads us to the conclusion. This is currently the highest end Intel CPU and to be honest, considering how hard it's been to cool these for many years now, I'm really impressed with the cooler performance here. We're using somewhat representative coolers, which in many ways are able to handle the load without too much of a struggle. I still would recommend people who are getting this high-end chip to go with a dual tower air cooler or a 360ml liquid AO to keep your temperature and noise levels lower. But in a pinch, the surprising little hero in our test has to be the Be Quiet Pure Rock 2 FX. He actually managed to keep most of the performance while being somewhat on the cheaper side. What do you guys think about this new launch? And what cool are you planning to pair with your new Intel CPU? Let us know in the comments below. If any of the items seem like a good fit for your needs, feel free to check out the links below for more information. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe for more. We'll see you guys in the next one.